Dear participants at the Cult Art Academy, first of all, I would like to welcome you uh, all to the Episcopal Basilica Visitor Center and on-site museum. And I would like to wish you a successful training process here and a nice day in Plovdiv. Um, as Victor uh, told you, I'm going to present uh, the project and we'll tell you more about the project for the Episcopal Basilica of Philippopolis and some more about the history of the museum, the history of the site, uh, something more about the mosaics because here we uh, have here presented uh, three different mosaics from three different periods. It's a bit complicated. Um, so I'll try to avoid um, strict professional terminology, but um, I cannot avoid it at all. Uh, so, the project for the sheltering, conservation and display of the Episcopal Basilica of Philippopolis was one of the most important initiatives of Plovdiv Municipality as European Capital of Culture in 2019. It took place uh, in 2014, 2021, thanks to the public-private uh, public -private partnership between the America for Bulgaria Foundation, the Municipality of Plovdiv and the Ministry of Culture of Bulgaria, with the main goal to preserve and integrate the archaeological site in situ into the modern urban environment, as well as to promote Bulgarian cultural heritage and tourism. The process of complete excavation, research, restoration, and construction of the visitor center and public space uh, of the Basilica be began in 2014 and builds on the experience of the America for Bulgaria Foundation and the municipality of Plovdiv from the successful completion of another joint project in Plovdiv, the small basilica site. The project implementation united the efforts of archaeologists, restorers, architects, and builders aimed at the discovery, research, restoration, interpretation, and display of the Episcopal Basilica. Uh, restoration of the Episcopal Basilica of Philippopolis was supported not just by the state institutions and agencies, but also by the local community and businesses. The archaeological excavations in 2016-2017 were aided by more than 450 volunteers. You can see some of them here. Uh, since uh, about uh, only about half of the building had been investigated before the project started, uh, here you can see the situation uh, at the beginning of, of the project and later. Um, in 26, uh, 2000, uh, in 2016, Plovdiv Municipality and the America for Bulgarian Foundation signed a memorandum for the complete archaeological excavation and display of the Episcopal Basilica site. As a result, the road to the north of the site was removed and the start was given to an archaeological investigations and unearthing of the northern half of the building. Uh, this act is an important management decision by the municipality of Plovdiv and has historical significance for overall, overall study, display and preservation of the site. Something more about the history of uh, the site. Uh, the Episcopal Basilica 
was discovered during rescue archaeological excavations carried out in the 1990s, 19, uh, 1980s, I'm sorry, uh, from 1982 to, 19, to 1986. It is located um, to the east of the Forum complex of the ancient Philippopolis. Um, and to the south of the modern day Catholic Church. It was located in the center of the ancient city and in the center of the modern city. Until 2002, about half of the building was investigated and in 2016, 2017, uh, after the road was removed, it was fully unearthed. It's a three-nave basilica with an apse to the east and a peculiarly shaped narthex and atrium to the west. It's located east-west. Um, exceptionally large, it has a lavish architectural interior and mosaic floors. It's about 83 meters long and 36 meters wide, which makes it the largest fourth to sixth to six century basilica in Bulgaria and one of the largest on the Balkans, but definitely the largest uh, in Europe with uh, preserved mosaic floors. The basilica was erected at the middle of the fourth century and collapsed in the late sixth century. And during, during this period, this time, it underwent several reconstruction and several repairs. The floors of the basilica are covered with mosaics totaling an area of over 2,000 square meters. A detailed stratigraphic study was carried out during the conservation of the mosaic floors in order to investigate the mosaic laying techniques and materials used and also to identify their construction periods and phases. This research revealed three floors laid uh, atop one atop the other and also identified uh, the various uh, uh, stone use, stones used and preparatory mortars. Based on this research, uh, based on this re analysis of the mosaic floors of the basilica, the following general mosaic laying periods were determined. Uh, here I cannot avoid some uh, terminology professional. The first floor, um, I told you, here uh, the mosaic link is very complicated. The first floor uh, was uh, in a so-called opus uh, signinum technique made of pink lime-based mortar uh, with the terminus postquem um, determined by a coin of Licinius the first found in it. The second floor was an opus tessellatum technique laid in several stages between mid fourth and early sixth centuries. Uh, the mosaic in the nave was laid first and the mosaic floors for both side aisles uh, and other parts of the basilica uh, were laid later. The third floor covers the earlier mosaics. It's an opus tessellatum technique laid between late fifth and mid sixth centuries. According to their composition, scale, iconography, materials, and execution, the mosaics can be divided into three groups. The earliest mosaic, laid only in the nave, differs significantly from the, uh, the rest of the mosaics in the basilica. It is not very colorful, um, large in scale compared to the others, outstandingly monumental, and exhibit features of the early mosaics of Philippopolis with a marked Western influence. The second group of mosaics, which includes those in the side aisles, the apse and narthex, 
Here you can see this mosaic on the right of you. Uh, they were laid later in uh, at the end of fourth, uh, early fifth centuries, uh, under the influence of the Eastern early Christian centers. Uh, that is why they are so different. The mosaic, the lower mosaic layer in the, the nave and in the side aisles, they are completely different in style, in colors, um, in scale. Um, they depict intricate polychrome geometric ornamental compositions with extremely uh, rich decoration, including numerous pre-Christian and early Christian ornaments and symbols. The mosaics of the third floor, most of these mosaics you can see in the northern part of the museum, uh, in the, on the first floor of the, of the museum and on the second floor of the museum. Um, they depict intricate geometric uh, patterns, including figurative images of vases, flower baskets, plants, and birds. And most if impressive of them are the spring of life scene, um, laid in the center of the, each of the side aisles. Um, on the first floor, you can see one of the scenes um, in the north northern aisle, uh, and the other you can see on the second floor of the museum. Um, the other interesting uh, scenes from uh, these mosaics are the images of over 100 birds in the middle of the panel of the nave, as well as uh, the rosette-like peacock with open tail. Uh, you can have the, the opportunity to see and to look around, uh, to see all the mosaics looking around the museum. Um, most important here is about the technique and the materials used is that all the mosaics are made by natural stones. Um, in four to eight colors with uh, several, each with several different, different shades. After the completion of the archeological excavations uh, in the 1980s, temporary shelters were set up, the last of which collapsed in 1999. Here you can see that this shelter, this photo dates from the 19. 1986, oh, sorry, 1986 or something. In the period, if this photo is after it collapsed, um, in the period after 1990s, due to economic changes in Bulgaria and serious cuts in conservation and maintenance budgets, the condition of the mosaic worsened considerably. The site was left, uh, was left with fence only um, and unguarded. The mosaics were covered with a polyethylene sheet, unfortunately, were covered with this polyethylene sheet and that's in uh, land of uh, sand, uh, layer of sand, which resulted in their further deterioration. After the initiation of the project, conservation work on site started in early March 2015, after the conservation plan was um, had been approved by the national authorities, by National Institute for Cultural uh, Heritage. Since then, a lot of various conservation and restoration activities had been had been carried out in accordance with. Uh, international professional standards in the field of mosaic restoration with the main goal, the maximum preservation of their integrity, authenticity, original stratigraphy in the context of the archaeological site. I will really try to avoid complicated professional terminology and will show some of the most important restoration work carried out by our team from 2015 up to date because we continue with the maintenance and uh, conservation of the mosaic. Uh, 
After the initiation of the project, uh, conservation work started. Uh, actually, I began with the first our first actions. Uh, first, the remains of the demolished temporary shelter were cleared out. The garbage pile during the last 20 years was lifted. Uh, the trees and the vegetation were cleared, and the sand cover and the polyethylene sheet were removed from the mosaics. As you see, the condition of the mosaics was horrible. Um, I was scared. I have more than 30 years practice in mosaic conservation, but um, that was unexpected for me. Uh, in 2015, the team unearthed, stabilized, and detached the upper layer mosaics of the southern half, southern half of the basilica with a total area of 800 square meters. So here you can see some uh, photos of the process of this detachment of the mosaic, which is a very difficult and risky uh, operation. But it had to be done because of the condition of the mosaics, of the upper layer mosaics. After the upper layer mosaics were detached, the mortar between the two mosaic layers was carefully removed until the lower layer mosaics in the southern aisle and the nave were reached. Here you can see this process. Our team, during that uh, removal, our team had the unique chance to discover the donor's inscription. You can see it here in the middle of the southern aisle later. Um, which has the name of the bishop during his, whose time the mosaic was laid. This inscription is uh, of enormous uh, scientific importance as it proves the archaeologist's uh, hypothesis that this was an Episcopal basilic, since it has the, the name of the bishop. Uh, from 2016 till 2019, the lifted mosaics were restored in a workshop, transferred on new supports, uh, and now they are displayed on the second floor of the visitor center. Here you can see some uh, uh, moments from the restoration work on site, which was focused on unearthing, rescue st stabilization, consolidation, and cleaning of over 2,000 square meters of mosaics, consolidation of wall paintings, um, and other um, fragments. Also, yeah, different moments of this. Uh, here you can see actually the detachment of some other uh, mosaics. And reburial of mosaics and architectural elements occupying an area of 2,000 square meters. Actually, this reburial that you see, uh, this is the final reburial of the site during the construction of the uh, of this building, the cover building. Um, and after that, after the building was constructed, oh, okay, here it goes. Um, On site, uh, here you can see the construction of the foundations of the, uh, the cover building, with, starting with the supporting columns in uh, 2018. Uh, and I would like to show you some more pictures after the construction uh, or during the construction of the building because we had to work together with the constructors. It was a huge challenge uh, for the conservation team. 
Um, now you can see uh, some moments of the relaying uh, the mosaic fragments over the newly built foundations uh, around these columns. Um, the construction Actually, here you can see the construction of the protective building brought this unique monument back to life and successfully integrated it into the modern urban environment. With its creative exhibit design, the visitor center has become an attractive place for Plovdiv citizens and visitors, as well as a preferred space for hosting art and cultural events. In 2017, the Episcopal Basilica was granted the status of a serial property together with uh, two other sites. Uh, this is so-called the small basilica site and the late antique irony building. Uh, in 2018, the Syria property called Episcopal Basilica and late antique mosaics of Philippopolis, Roman province of Trace, entered UNESCO's tentative list. And in conclusion, I would like to express our confidence that the Episcopal Basilica will find its rightful place on UNESCO's list of world heritage sites. This exceptional site's return to life is important for Plovdiv, for Bulgaria, and Europe. It is uh, critical to remember, appreci appreciate, and preserve our rich heritage and to pass it on to the future generations. So thank you for your attention, and I hope you have time to look around the site. Thank you.